Hi, this is Debbie, and today I'm sharing a video I created for my Doodling with Debbie series for Simon Says Stamp. I love to watercolour, and over the Christmas break, I enjoyed creating a bunch of easy watercolour backgrounds to use in my card making. And I'll be sharing more of these backgrounds on my blog at limedoodledesign.com over the next wee while if you want to check those out. I made this card using a simple gradient wash of watercolours, which pairs beautifully with the Tumbling Heart stencil from Simon Says Stamp and Nouveau Glimmer Paste. The result is a lovely backdrop for the You Are Loved dies. So let's jump into making this card and I started with the gradient wash of watercolours for the background. I used a lot of water to create the background and so I taped the piece of Archer's cold press watercolour card I used to a board to stop it warping. To create a smooth gradient of colour I added a wash of clear clean water over the whole panel. You could do this with a broad watercolour brush as I've done here or spritz paper with a mini mister or household paintbrush. It doesn't matter how you wet the paper, but what you're looking for is an even sheen of water. When I tip the board to the light, hopefully you can see here a soft sheen of water. You don't want so much water that you have a lake, because if you then add watercolour to that amount of water, you will get the colour just puddling. Having a sheen of water prevents the puddling while encouraging the paint to move through the water. I think with watercolour, the amount of water you use is more key than anything, whether it be the amount of water in your paint mix or the amount of water on your card for this wet on wet technique. Learning to look and recognise the water content will improve your end result no end. So again with that sheen of water, the paint gently spreads through the background. I started with a light wash of purples, whatever was on my palette but mixed with Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine. And I blended this out by rinsing my brush often until it was the palest of colours. I took this purple just about halfway up the card. Then from the top down I bought a wash of pale rich yellow. Again what was on my palette and then mixed with Daniel Smith Cranacker and Gold. I brought this down to meet the purple layer but again washing my brush out as I went so that the junction between the two colours is very pale. And this background was inspired by a winter sky I saw with deep purple hues near the horizon and the warmth of the sky above. With the first layer down and the paper still wet, check for the sheen and if the paper has started to dry you won't get that lovely blending of colours. But while it's still wet you can go back in and add more depth of colour. I mix some lunar black in with my original purple mix and as this dries you will see the granulating effect of this paint as the pigment settles into the valleys of the textured watercolour card. Again, I wash this layer out to the palest of colours by rinsing my brush in water bit by bit. Then I added a further yellow layer to the top with more richness of golden hues to the mix. When I first created this card over the holidays, I allowed this layer to dry naturally. But for the speed of creating for a video, I used a heat tool to dry the background. And then while the panel is still taped to the board, I taped the tumbling heart stencil over the top. I kept the card on the board as the Nouveau Glimmer paste I swiped through the stencil is also a relatively wet medium and the board will again keep the card from warping. I spread glimmer paste as if I'm spreading butter on bread by using a range of palette knife and a shallow angle to draw the glimmer paste over the stencil letting the paste settle into the heart shaped openings. I work the paste backwards and forwards over the stencil until I have the whole area covered and a smooth finish. I then lifted the blue tape holding the stencil in place and then everyone's favourite part is lifting the stencil to reveal the glittery design. Again when I first made this card I let the paste dry naturally but for the video I used a heat tool to speed up the drying process. I'm going to keep the rest of this card clean and simple so that I don't cover up too much of the background. I chose the You Are Loved dies and cut the lettering three times from Ivory Card and the shadow background piece from Vellum. I then used Gina K Connect glue to layer the ivory die cut lettering pieces together. The nozzle of the tube makes it easy to dot small amounts of glue over the back of the lettering pieces and then stack one on top of the other. If you add too much glue then dab off the excess on scrap paper before stacking the dies together and then you won't get any glue squidging out. On my original card I glued the stacked dies to the vellum piece and I'm not quite sure why I changed my mind to do this next part as it's fiddly and I'd already created dimension by stacking the dies. However, I did, so here you go. I cut small pieces of foam tape and added them to the back of the stacked dies and then I did them to the vellum. I then added more foam adhesive to the back of the vellum and added the piece to the front of the card. 
I added foam adhesive to the back of the panel and added it to a card base cut and scored from Ivory Card. When cutting out the You Are Love dies, there are optional hearts to add to the centre of the letter O's. I wanted to use these but scattered more randomly on the card front. I also wanted these to be in a warm gold embossed colour so I took each heart die and pressed it into an ink pad of clear embossing ink. I then dunked the die in antique gold embossing powder from Sansa Stamp and used a piece of blue tape to pick up the small die and then heat the powder until it melted. One coat wasn't enough to cover the die so I repeated the process a second time. I'm sure there is an easier method to doing this but I like keeping the die free so that the heated powder smooths over the edges and forms a nice shape when heat embossed. I repeated this process with three heart die cuts and then added small pieces of foam adhesive to the back of them and dotted them around the lettering in a triangle formation. I added Fairy Wings Nouveau Dream Drops and Glossy Pearls from Little Things from Lucy's Cards and finally a few sequins. And then that completes this easy watercolour background inspired by a winter sky and then jazzed up with a stencil and glimmer paste plus a simple die cut sentiment and a few sparkly embellishments. I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used today as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at limedoodledesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.